G'day all, so in this video here we're going to be looking at average rates of change when looking at a function. So I've got this example here, I'll just go through it and I've already pre-written some notes to save some time. So the distance in meters of point O of an object T seconds after it moves, after it starts to move in a straight line, so it's going in a straight line, is given by the function st is equal to t cubed plus t squared minus t 2t plus 2 when t is greater than or equal to 0. You'll notice t has got to be greater than or equal to 0 because we're talking about time here. You can't really have a negative time. Okay, so our question is asking us to find the average rate of change with respect to time of the distance. So essentially, if you're asking for that, you are asking for a speed that it's going okay so this and we're looking at meters and seconds so this will be in meters per second so I've just wrote uh, written down how to actually work out average rate of time when given a function so the rate of change of a function fx over two points when x is equal to a and x is equal to b okay is the change of fx over the change of x. Remember, average rate of change is just like finding a gradient. So if you graphed it up, got those two points and drew a straight line, that's what the gradient will be. That's what we are finding. So to do this, all we need to do is our f of b minus f of a, and then your two values here. So we're going to go through a and b and do these. So we'll first do... So, we're looking at the average rate of change with respect to time of the distance from the object from O in the first two seconds. So, let's figure out our A and B value. So, first, our A, so it starts at zero seconds. So, we've got, essentially, and I'm going to write T for this because this is our T value. We've got T is equal to zero. And then in the first two seconds, we're going to be looking when t is equal to 2 as well. So with this, all we need to do is set up our function. And you can use your CAS for this, defining your function. And it's pretty straightforward once you do do that. So we need to have our s of 0. So this is going to equal the s, oh, sorry, not of 0, of 2. So just remember it's your second value, okay? Just like your y2 minus y1, so your second value, your one furthest from the right or the most positive is equal to s minus s0. And this is going to be all over 2 minus 0. So I've already worked these out on my calculator in front of me. So defined it and then put it in. So s of 2 is 10. s of 0 is 2 because that's the constant that's in the equation when all the other t's are 0. And this is going to be over 2 minus 0. So this is going to be... So 10 minus 2, that's 8. 2 minus 0 is 2. So 8 over 4 8 over 2, I should say, I just said the answer, 4 metres per second. Because remember, this is metres and this is seconds, as stated in our question. Okay? So, part B, it is very similar. It's just about working out where we're going from this. So, this is in the next two seconds. All right? So this means that we're going to be looking from t is equal to 2 and t is equal to 4. So we're looking over those two seconds now. So we just do the same, but substitute in the other values. So just remember, so this is going to be s of 4 because that's our more positive value. That's the one that's going to be furthest on the right. That's our y2 value if you're breaking down the gradient minus s2. This is going to be over 4 minus 2. 
Okay, I've already done this on my calculator again. So S of 4, when we sub 4 in for all the T values, gives us 74. We know S of 2 from our last question is 10. Over 4 minus 2. So it's going to be 64 divided by 2, which is equal to 32. And make sure you always put the units meters per second. Okay, so I'll just run through some of the key points again. Make sure if you are doing it on your CAS, you define your function here. Okay, define that, and it makes it really easy to put in these values here in your calculator to work it out then. And it just saves um, making a mistake. So if you make sure that you've defined it properly, you won't make a mistake uh, in actually calculating it. Okay, so. All you need to remember then is this here, our FB minus FA over BO minus A, okay? So it's just substituting in the values where you're taking your average rate of change over, okay? So just remember this is like when you have your F of B here, this is like substituting in your B value or your X value in to find your Y. So this is just, remember, this is just our, essentially, our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? They are the exact same thing, except for this second one is in our function notation, okay? So it's exactly the same. Whenever you see average rate of change, you should be just thinking your gradient equation straight away. Think your gradient equation, then we just need to put it in our function notation. That's the only difference between them. If you prefer doing it the gradient way, you can work it out like this and graph it. It just takes a bit longer. Okay, So just make sure you distinguish the relationship between our gradient equation and the function notation for that, Okay, as circled here. Okay, So hopefully this clears how to do these when given a function.